Since we're moving on this bill, HR 3200, it's a bill that already came out of uh, the committee yesterday, one of the other committees. I want to go through this bill because this is the major piece of legislation that, that's being talked about. I could spend four hours on all of the different details of this bill. I will try and give it to you in four minutes, okay? Uh, I'll give you basically the Cliff Notes version, and in, in the open forum, the question and answer, I'd be happy to go to any level of detail you want to with this legislation. First, H.R. 3200 changes existing health insurance law in very profound and significant ways. Most health insurance is regulated by state governments. This nationalizes the regulation of health insurance and puts the control of health insurance under a new government agency called the Health Choices Administration. It will be run by uh, a new uh, political appointee by the president called the Health Choices Commissioner. So the commissioner will run this new administration which will effectively regulate health insurance in America. It creates something that's called a national health exchange. Exchange is a word that's used in a lot of different healthcare policy areas. It sometimes has multiple meanings. What it means in this bill is the federal government will set up basically a, a shopping forum, a marketplace whereby all individuals in America who don't get qualified health insurance from their jobs must buy their health insurance in this national exchange run by the commissioner. Um, in, inside of the exchange, there is a public health insurance option. This is what a lot of people are focusing on. You probably heard about the public plan. That's what this is. This is a government-run health insurance company uh, that is to be created and run by the commissioner inside of the exchange to compete against uh, any private insurance uh, plans that may exist inside of that exchange. Inside, um, oh, there's two big mandates uh, under this new proposed law. Uh, there's an individual mandate, and for individuals, who don't get qualified health insurance at their jobs, they will have to buy health insurance in the exchange. The insurance that they have to buy will be defined by a lot of parameters in this bill and by the regulatory um, structures guided by the commissioner. If an individual does not buy health insurance in the exchange, then he or she will be assessed a penalty equal to 2.5% of their annual income, their adjusted gross income. Um, the mandate on employers works a little differently. They call this the pay or play mandate. That means employers must offer, all but the smallest of employers, must offer uh, qualified health insurance as uh, dictated by the, the, the commissioner. Um, it has to be uh, equivalent to the kind of insurance in the exchange. They have to offer it to their employees, or if they choose not to do that, that's play or they pay. And they have to pay an 8% payroll tax per every worker for all of their wages, that payroll tax is indexed at inflation. That's how the two different mandates work. Um, there are tax, there are credits to help people pay for the cost of coverage. Those are only accessed inside the exchange. Um, it does basically two things. Number one, the goal of these credits is to help limit the out-of-pocket healthcare costs for people who are middle or lower income. The credits apply to people who, make, who are at or below 400% of the poverty level, which is basically about a uh, family of four earning $85,000. Uh, it also expands Medicaid and the Medicaid eligibility of that program by a third. So you have about a 33% increase in the Medicaid program, which I mentioned earlier is already going broke. And then you have uh, the, these new subsidies for people and families under 400% of the poverty line. Now, there's two basic ways that this bill is attempted to pay, be paid for. Number one, there's about $500 billion in gross uh, cuts to Medicare uh, providers. Those uh, reductions in Medicare reimbursement rates to providers, they don't change the traditional benefit structure for a senior. They lower the payments to Medicare providers like nursing facilities or home health agencies and things like that. $500 billion of that. And then there's a new surtax. The surtax uh, is a new income surtax. The top rate is 5.4%. Uh, above individuals, for individuals making more than a million dollars. Now, most people think, hey, so what if Brett Favre pays more money on income above a million dollars? And you know what, in Brett Favre's case, I think that's perfectly okay. Uh, <laughs> I'd actually send a supporter and manage to carve him out for maybe a little more. Um, joking. The problem, the, the issue with that is it's important to remember 70% of our jobs in America, and more than that in Wisconsin, come from small businesses. And the majority of small businesses file their taxes as individuals. And so this surtax doesn't just hit people like Brett Favre. This surtax disproportionately in a majority 
it's small businesses. This surtax, when you add it to state level income taxes, means the top tax rate for small businesses is 54.27% here in the state of Wisconsin. So those two are paid for, the Medicare cuts and the surtax, is essentially, along with the pay or play uh, taxes, is how the bill is intended to be paid for. Okay, 